Why don't you just check out LV-426? Because I don't have to. There have been people there for over 20 years, and they never complained about any hostile organism. What do you mean? What people? Terraformers. Planet engineers. They go in and set up these big atmosphere processes to make the air breathable. It takes decades. It's what we call a shake-and-bake colony. Hello, lovelies. Today, we're going to take a look at Building Better Worlds uh, by Free League for the Alien role-playing game. Uh, people were curious. Um, I want to build a game to run for Noodle, uh, formerly of Tabletopless. So I thought, what the hell, I'll get it. Maybe I can use it with Traveller and other games as well. You know, you can't get enough semi-hard <laughs> uh, SF in your life. Now, I like the idea of this book. I like the idea of multi-generational colony campaigns where you struggle to survive and to establish a decent world upon which others can live. Xenomorphs or no xenomorphs. I like communitarian base building games. I like The Quiet Year. I like Underground. I like Pendragon. Um, I've always liked that aspect of games before it was cool. <laughs> Um, and I've also liked the base building aspects of Conspiracy X, for example, and Free League's own Vason and Walking Dead, and to an extent their version of Twilight 2000 all have this kind of base and community building element to it. And it's not done horribly in Vason or The Walking Dead. Um, this was a bit of a disappointment, though. Well, we do get a decent primer on colonization in the aliens' world, universe, milieu, I suppose. And we get a potted history of it with relation to the major Earth powers that are involved, along with the differences and similarities between the various different colonial initiatives, breakaway colonies, and all of that kind of stuff. The stuff we kind of um, expect in an American-dominated view of the universe. You know, the heroic breakaways. The, the brown shirts, if you will. Um, if you're interested in the expanded lore of the aliens universe that whole section is is quite interesting um i i suppose uh, if you're not that deep into the lore and the attempts to reconcile prometheus and uh, and the rest with the main line of the uh, of the alien movies then you won't find it all that useful but it's by no means out of place here and it makes a half decent reference uh, book for that at your table should you need it and inspiration of course you do get a couple of new career paths the wild catter who's a bit of a bit of a chancer a bit who bit a uh, bit <laughs> Uh, looking for profit out in the big black by whatever means they can and the entertainer who seems a bit out of place to start with but is given a pretty broad spin to where they make for good bar owners you know brothel owners uh, that sort of thing um, that we've come to expect from the sort of western version of the stellar frontier so they're quite good for that sort of thing still only two new roles is a little bit thin on the ground um we could have gotten a bit more with i don't know farmers or atmospheric engineers or you know there's uh, there's a, a few roles i mean they cross over with stuff from the basic book but it could have been interesting to go into sub-specializations of various roles that are more suited to the colonial frontier and we don't really uh, get that necessarily we get a somewhat decent guide to frontier campaigns of colonization with different types of colony different types of campaigns expeditions and trading missions that could take place on the frontier 
and the description of some of the various challenges that one might face. Uh, there's a decent guide to a whole lot of different colonies in the universe. There's more detail on some than others, but it's pretty difficult to sum up a whole world in a handful of sentences and statistics. Mostly harmless. Uh, disappointment in this book first really set in with the species catalogue. We get a honking great mass of different xenomorph and black goo related creatures, but precious little on alien life more generally. Um, one thing I did appreciate about this book is it made the nature of the Arcturans a little bit more vague again, uh, which was nice. But why not include a few pages on generating your own alien creatures from templates and their capabilities? You know, it seems to me obvious that it would have been a good idea to have some alien species creation rules so that I could spin up a Rinth or a, Bly or a Bry Wolf from a set of semi-generic templates and modifiers. Not everything has to be Xenomorph or Engineer related or black goo related I, I don't think um, it's a bit of a disappointment that it was here then from page 141 to page 275 nearly half of all the pages in the book we get a mini sandbox campaign and a bunch of shorter adventures my deep irritation at this way of publishing game materials is well established at this point but for anyone who's new, I tend to feel quite resentful and ripped off, especially if half the book being sold as a supplement is actually full of adventure material. Um, material that likely isn't going to be used at all uh, by me, or at best is going to be used once and once only, because generally speaking, you can't reuse adventures. The tail end of the book, the last yeah, 20 or so pages, is perhaps the most useful and the most worth the money. Um, there are enhanced star system generation rules, though if you have one of Traveller's more recent editions, you could probably use that instead. But these do create a more expansive and detailed understanding of the systems that you choose to create. Uh, it was interesting that they bothered to include uh, trinary systems, three-star systems. After all, at this point, we've all seen the three-body problem. But of course, this this was written quite a while ago. Uh, including three-body systems seems rather foolhardy now in, <laughs> in retrospect. We do get some basic colony generation and seeds for creating your own, like who sponsored it, what its purpose is supposed to be and so on. They even define colonies with six attributes here and make a mini game out of establishing and growing the colony. Uh, colonies here are defined by economy, potential, productivity, maintenance, science and spirit. However, unlike the never bested game Underground, these aren't necessarily in particular flux or interrelated particularly. So the mini game is limited largely to undertaking various missions in order to raise these statistics until you reach an arbitrary breakpoint at which the colony is considered to be freestanding. Uh, this could have been a much deeper system, uh, a much more engaging mini game and system if they had spent more time and space on it and had gone for something more like more like underground the underground does it better and uh, I do it even better in my games where I've ripped off the rules from underground anyway that last 20 pages or so is gold but it just it doesn't justify the overall cover price and it stops short because it's not given sufficient space to breathe and that's unfortunate uh, it's style wise let's let's do the scores so in terms of style it's pretty it looks right uh, but black pages are still a controversial choice for a lot of people though there is a reasonable amount of text on a on a gray background 
Um, the darker artwork that they have suits the content and the style and the cinematography of the films, but the painted pieces definitely suffer from the muddiness and lack of contrast that is my own personal bugbear when it comes to so much modern game illustration. Still, as a professionally produced product to mainstream quality industry standards, I'm going to give it a, a 3 out of 5 for style. Uh, 4 out of 5 if the black pages don't bother you too much. In terms of substance, well, we have about 295 pages here. Uh, about 141 pages are kind of meh. Uh, depend very much on whether you find background lore and so on hugely interesting or applicable to your games. Uh, you may or may not, depending on your group and your own engagement with the alien milieu. And about... Uh, so that's about 48% meh. About 134 pages are, in my opinion, wasted on adventure material. That's about 45% that is essentially worthless to me or, or people like me. And then you've got 20 pages of gold, uh, which amounts to about 7% of the uh, of the overall amount. So if I take the meh pages as scoring a 3, if I take the wasted pages as scoring a 1, and I take the, the gold dust pages as scoring a 5 out of 5, uh, average all that out, that ends up at you know, just over 2 in terms of score, which isn't very good at all. So that's about 5 out of 10, 2.5 out of 5, that is a low average score. So much of the space that's given over to the adventures in the mini campaign could have been turned over to a much more fully fledged species creation system, adventure creation and generators rather than examples and expanding out that last 20 pages that is really good. So um, I don't know that this is particularly worth the price of admission unless you're deep into the law and unless black pages don't bother you. Uh, you might be better off getting resources for Traveller 2300 or, or something which is similar enough, um, not too difficult to convert, should you feel so inclined. Um, and vice versa though, of course, you might want to use 2300 to run an alien campaign, in which case this is going to be quite useful to you on that score. If Free League want to get higher scores from me, and I'm not egotistical enough to think that they uh, do necessarily, drop the adventures, or at least most of the adventures. Go for a more graphical design when it comes to the artwork, and spend more time on the things that are obviously missing, <laughs> or are the strengths of the books, like that last 20 pages. Um, otherwise you're going to continue to get low scores from me, which I'm sure you don't care about because not that many people watch me. <laughs> Sang. Sup bitches, I'm reliably informed that I'm terrible at pimping my stuff. So here I am, pimping my stuff in what's hopefully an amusing way. If you want to interact with me and follow me, you can find me on Twitter at Grimasaur and at Mort underscore post for official announcements.